When I stay in a hotel, there's an unspoken understanding that I, the guest, will pretend or maybe actively forget to know that someone else slept in the bed not that long ago and did whatever they did and used all the stuff in the room and they, the hotel, will do everything that they can to remove any evidence that reminds me of this. A stay in a hotel is, in its little way, akin to a willing suspension of reality. If we both comply with this little bit of fantasy, it tends to work. Partly because we really want to stay in the hotel and partly because it requires only a small amount of effort to really overcome this fantasy. Ultimately, we are playing a role. Actors in a piece of theatre that allows us to dismiss the complex reality of the world. We do this all the time. We go through life playing particular roles that suit the circumstances. We behave different as a sibling than we do as a professional in the workplace. In a group of young people, the older person, even by a few years, might take on a more mature role like the mother hen or the dad. A more scientific way to look at this is that we process the information that helps us to understand our little piece of existence or this particular reality and ignore the information, whether consciously or unconsciously, that doesn't work for us at that point in time. So it's no wonder that people who are worried about their current state look for simple solutions to complex problems. When somebody leaves a wonderful narrative that appeals to the target market and provides a solution that fits in with their desired reality, it usually seems plausible. If it ends up on a current affair, GMA or panorama, then it must be true, mustn't it? Throw in some jargon or words that sound complex, or maybe some stats or charts, and it makes us trust the speaker even more because it gives us a potential happy ending. Because, um, science? As any psychologist or sociologist will tell you, a story or a narrative is so much more powerful than complex facts and information. We don't want to hear that the world is complex, messy, uncaring or random. And we certainly don't want to admit to ourselves that we are not in control of our destiny. To come to terms with that requires effort to process it. We also struggle when experts talk in probabilities, not in definitive outcomes. So when somebody tells a story about a drug or a political decision or a person who can save us that seems to lead to some kind of happy ending, we enter into an unspoken agreement not to think too much about the reality. The problem is that the world and people are messy. Most decisions are made on the run with limited information and in reality, most people don't have as much control over the outcome as we think they do. To live an honest life, we need to be much more willing to accept uncertainty and doubt. We need to talk about probabilities and how even if something has a probability of happening of just 1%, it still means that every 100 times, statistically, it will happen and it could happen to you. When somebody presents something as definitive and right and the only way to do something, we have to be sceptical to feel comfortable questioning that, but we also need to take some responsibility in looking for alternative explanations rather than just complaining or looking to others to fix it. We need to remind ourselves that science, politics, business, medicine, life is complex and provisional, that it can be positive, but it can also be horrible. In 1759, François-Marie Arouet, also known as Voltaire, wrote a satirical novel about a young, overly optimistic man, Candide, and parodied the adventure, inspiration and romance of what could be contemporarily interpreted as the optimism industry. But by the end of the novella, what Voltaire suggests is that while most of us come into this world as innocent and as hopeful as Candide, most of us discover, slowly or quickly, that there is no pre-established harmony to life, and that it's important to acknowledge the complexity and messiness of existence. Ultimately, we're all aware of the flimsy facade that sits behind the complex internal and external world we inhabit. Coming to terms with this is a sign of both maturity and wisdom.